If we completely ignore the fact that I did this rank up like over a month ago now, I'm officially revealing today my first uh, rank 3 tech champion and my fifth rank 3 overall. And it came down to a choice between Shuri, Warlock, and Penny Parker. Um, Penny Parker being the only one of the three that is unduped. And if you know me, I rank champs who I absolutely love playing the most. And uh, that completely ruled out Shuri because I don't enjoy playing Shuri at all, uh, flat out. I just don't like her. Uh, so then it was between Warlock and Penny. I love Warlock. I think he's such a fun champion to play. And of course, I have him duped. He's also just very good in a bunch of war and battleground stuff. And I think the same thing applies to Penny. Um, she's a little bit less good than Warlock just due to utility purposes. But she also just has better damage than the Warlock in my opinion, except for maybe in like a war scenario where you got like power back boosts and stuff. And uh, we're just going to be taking Penny, as you can see she was the person that I picked uh, around some places in the contest for this video. Um, I will be making an official like large showcase for Penny um, when the new war tactic comes out. So it'll be a little while, probably like give me like another month and then I'll have like a full penny showcase out, but it is because I really want to wait till I can get some Alliance War gameplay, because Al Alliance War is my favorite game mode in the entire game, so I do want to uh, be able to provide some really nice penny content there, because like I said, she's going to be attack tactic next season, and because I have her at rank 3, and because of the specific utilities that penny does provide, I am suspecting her to be a very good attacker next season, but only time will tell. We'll have to see. We don't even know what the tactic is going to do yet, so I'm just kind of ha at wishful thinking at this point, but I do have high hopes that I'm going to be getting some really nice penny assignments next season. So, all right, there's Realm of Legends Winter Soldier, and I took him down in just one SP, or two SP2s, two SP1s and one SP2. That's basically the basic penny rotation. Uh, if you don't know how penny works, you gain spider sense charges every time the opponent crosses a bar of power, and then your second way to gain them is by throwing the SP1. You're gonna get four when you throw it, and then another four if they cross a bar of power during this attack, and they cross a bar, of, well, you will power drain 25% of a bar when you activate the special. So basically the goal is not to do that, but basically you want to push them just over a bar and then throw the SP-1 because it's going to power drain them a bit and then they're going to, after the SP-1, they're going to have just as much power as what they started with and then yeah, you just want to keep them right at that threshold and then do double SP-1 and then drop the SP-2 which just does a bunch of instant incinerates and then incinerate debuffs right after. So some other stuff I'm going to break down for Penny Knowledge. Um, and it's just the basic things I like to talk about during champion showcases. It's just something that people will ask a lot. Uh, three questions, first of which, does she need to be awakened? In my opinion, Penny does not. What the SIG ability is going to do is give you access to a heal block uh, when the opponent crosses a bar of power, and that does let you cheese Nick Fury, which I also have a video on if you're interested in checking that out. Um, but that's like one of the few things I really like about it. Uh, it's good for like Weapon X is another example, but um, I don't think it's entirely necessary. And then the second question would be what relic to use on Penny. By far the Sentinel relic in my opinion. I have a 6 star rank 2 Sentinel relic and it is game changing for her just because of that incinerate vulnerability. That's why you see me always using the relic before I drop my SP2 because that incinerate vulnerability is huge for her. So, And then the third question is going to be stat focus. I personally use block proficiency because that's just going to increase the strength of Penny's sync shield. Um, so yeah, and then I also use block proficiency for defense. I'm not really sure if that's like a correct call, but um, it does definitely make it a little bit annoying to take her sync shield down um, when you're trying to fight her. So that definitely helps a little bit. And yeah, that was a rank three dust we took down with full health and 48 seconds. Uh, I'm definitely very proud of that. Dust is a champion that a lot of the uh, meta techs, like Nimrod, uh, can't take very well, but um, Penny does a really good job because Incinerate is not one of Dust's immunities, so um, I don't really know how meta Nimrod does it anymore, but I do know that, you know, uh, Nimrod definitely does not counter Dust very well, even though he counters most of the rest of the mutant class, except for some of the more recent stuff, which, you know, Dust is recent, so... Enough from Nimrod, we're gonna go back to watching Penny beat up this Doctor Doom here, 
and again this is just an sp1 sp2 matchup that's kind of how your uh cycles for battlegrounds are just gonna go like you saw me do double sp1 for a realm of legends but the bg's health pools you really don't need to do that and uh we're just gonna yeah drop the sp sp um sp2 and that's just gonna be lights out for doom and that's just how most of your matchups go, especially if you have class advantage. Sometimes I do think that it is worth going for double SP1, especially if you're going against someone with like an energy resist stat focus or just energy resistance in general. Um, I do think double SP1 would be worth it. Like Rintra is a person I like to use Penny for sometimes, and um, you definitely would like to double SP1 that fight. So uh, next up we're gonna fight Destroyer. And this was from the meta with uh, Rich Get Richer and Archaos. Um, so it is a little bit wacky, but still, it was a pretty fun fight that I took a while ago. I don't have a lot of BG's fights, um, but I'll have a lot more when I do the big showcase uh, when the War Attack comes out and everything. So uh, you can wait for that, and it'll be a pretty good time. So yeah, um, we just kind of keep beating up Destroyer here uh, and Dexing his SP1s. I'm trying to build power to an SP2 and drop it before uh, he gets his big power gain. And yeah, now that I've dropped it, he is going to die very shortly after. I also didn't even use the relic, which, you know, I probably should have done for extra damage. Uh, because yeah, that would have let me like kill a rank 3 destroyer if I used that relic. So uh, a bit of a mistake on my part, but it's all good. So now we're moving to a old side quest boss from last month. Uh, this is a weapon X boss. and. Uh, he's stun immune, he also can poison you or something, I think. But Penny is poison immune, so uh, we don't have to worry about that part at all. So it's just a big Weapon X that we have to take down, uh, just kind of normally. And yeah, you see how much Weapon X is healing, obviously. Uh, this can be mitigated by the poison a bit, um, but this is an example of where Penny's sick ability might be kind of decent, uh, just because you don't have to worry about that regen at all. So. Yeah, like he's regening almost a thousand per tick, and that wouldn't be there most of the time if we have Penny Awakened. So she is honestly my most wanted dupe in the entire game right now, just because she is rank three, and I do think her sig ability is very good sometimes. So uh, yeah, I would be looking forward to that um, very soon, whenever I can actually get the chance to awaken her. So we dropped the SP2, it completely nukes him, and then yeah, that's the weapon X boss. Uh, Penny did a very solid job there very happy with how that went and now we're gonna move on to gauntlet dr. doom and this is an interesting fight because it has the size matters node um, which gives uh, doom the ability to glance and then he can glance less and less types of attacks uh, the larger your character is and Penny is an XL champ because she's in a freaking mech, so I mean, it makes sense. Ironically, if she wasn't in the mech, she would be like the smallest champ in the game, which is kind of funny, but yeah. Anyway, uh, a fun thing about this fight is I'm running the uh, Falcon and Airwalker synergy, which if you use either one of them, it gives Penny the ability to be stun immune during, uh, during the time when her sync shield is active. So that just means that you can... Um, you can just do stuff like against Dr. Doom where you get the shock on you and you don't have to worry about him throwing a heavy attack because it's just going to whiff because it, he can't actually stun you. So uh, it's a really good time. So I'm going to drop the incinerate vulnerability and then go for an SP2 right there. And just the damage is completely nutty. And then just 15k per tick incinerates right after. Uh, just a really good time. So uh, yeah. We also are incinerate immune in case Doom actually drops his SP2 and I get clipped by it. We don't take any of the damage there, so it's not too big a deal. And yeah, we're just going to finish the fight off with one SP1, SP2, and then that is going to be the end of Gauntlet Doom. So um, yeah, I just need to get to an SP2 at this point, which now that I got that parry, I can get there because I just have the relic to combo extend right to two bars of power. The burst damage is just going to finish him off before we even get to see the incinerates. So there we go. Pretty fun fight there. And then next up, we're going to fight um, Old Man Logan from the Crucible quest. I don't exactly know what quest he is in in Axe content, but um, I took this fight uh, in the Crucible video that I made a couple days ago. And it does have the node that is going to falter me every 10 hits of my combo meter, which is going to be frustrating because Penny doesn't really have a way to get around that. But she also does have a lot, lot of combo from her special attacks to counteract the Lazarus node, which is pretty cool. 
and uh, the Lazarus node is always really annoying, so uh, I'm definitely going to have a good time countering that by just gaining one to combo meter because you remove one charge whenever you hit uh, 20 combo, I think. And yeah, she has like six or seven hits on the SP1, 11 in the SP2, so basically um, we are just going to uh, make sure to drop our special attacks when I know they can't falter me, except I know the SP2 final hit is always going to never land because you just can't land it because um, it's 11 hits. So. Uh, I just won't ever be able to place incinerates, but I will always be able to at least get the burst damage from the the uh, web shots, so there is that, and I'll take it. Um, so we're going to get to an SP2 real quick. I'm at 20 combo now, so I just need to wait out the falter, drop the relic, place the incinerate vulnerability, he throws a heavy attack, we drop the SP2, 27k per burst, so like 250,000 damage just on the SP2, and we didn't even get the incinerates afterwards. So quite just completely nutty damage which is always fun to see so anyway i'm gonna go to another sp2 and then it's not gonna actually kill him because of the lazarus node which we only had like one charge left on when we actually dropped it so we were pretty close but uh anyway we drop it right here i forget about bubble shield uh so i actually eat a combo there but it's all good we drop that he's not dead yet but we just go to another sp2 and then he's gonna die because we haven't actually consumed any of our charges to place the incinerates because the attack has always whiffed every time because of the node. So anyway, uh, we auto blocked there just because I messed up, I guess. And then now uh, he's almost dead. We're gonna go for another another trigger of arrogance, I think is the node. And then we drop an SP2. Still doesn't finish the job, but he's at one percent. So I, I just need to drop the relic, and then he dies. And then I get the Relic Intercept right there. So, there we go. The last fight I'm going to show off is Eternity of Pain Bishop. And this is uh, just a fight that uh, we are just going to use Penny's power control for. And she has power burn on both her SP1 and SP3. The SP1, if you activated it with 10 or more charges, and the SP3 just always. And then we're just going to also use the SP3 to fuel up Penny's Sync Shield. Um, because what that's just going to do is allow me to block some hits on Bishop's SP1 or SP2 if I feel like, and then not take a lot of damage from it. So I'm going to actually stop doing the voiceover uh, pretty soon because there's not going to be much to talk about for this fight. We just kind of throw a bunch of SP1s and SP3s because Bishop has the energy resistance to make it not worth going for an SP2. So we just stick to the same goal. And I completely forget about Hurt Locker, so there goes half my health immediately but uh, luckily we're still gonna live, so it's all good. And then of course we have Penny's amazing auto block so that when the game decides that I didn't actually deck so instead I block the special two, I can actually uh, you know, just be safe and it's not a problem. So anyway, we're just gonna be spamming power burn for the rest of the fights and that is just gonna be how the fight goes. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I can't wait to make more Penny content soon. Sorry it took so long to make this one. Um, but I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.